Hello, hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, as you can see from the title, it's not a vlog. Doesn't happen often, but it's happening today. I kind of wanted to do a bookshelf tour. So I've got my bookshelf, which we see very often in the background of my videos. I always find it interesting to see what other people read, especially when they're also a writer. And I also just find it super interesting to see all of the little like random books that people have picked up that you didn't expect them to read. So we're gonna we're gonna go through my entire bookshelf. Here's a little overview of like the area that my bookshelf is in. I kind of wanted to make it like a little, a nice little comfy seating area near the shelves. So that's what I did. So let's, let's start on the actual bookshelf. So this is what we've got going on over here. If we look at the very top, there are also countless plants because I just adore plants. So they're kind of everywhere. But if we look on the top shelf, we find my mostly nonfiction and also kind of just random books shelf. Um, so you can see over here, these are obviously nonfiction. They're not sorted. If you are here to see a nice aesthetically pleasing and sorted bookshelf, uh, that is not what we will find. <laughs> I try to sort them, but not really. And my bookshelves are kind of chaotic, so. So we can see that we've got some uh, astrophysics for people in a hurry, which is actually a really cool book. Um, and then a bunch of these are acting books because I used to be involved in acting. I still kind of am, but considering there's a pandemic, it's a difficult thing to do. However, these books are actually super useful for character development now um, because they have a lot of techniques for developing a character that you're going to play. And I have found that a lot of those techniques for like building a character when you're auditioning or when you're going to play them in a short film or something um, are actually very helpful for trying to learn about my characters. So I'm glad that those books are proving to be useful in other areas other than just acting. We have a couple books on religion, very few, um, mostly just like a Buddhism one and meditation. Uh, and then we have some self-help books. So there's quite the um, variety. We've got Limitless by Jim Quick. Uh, Good Food, Bad Diet isn't really self-help, but it's like a health, health book. Um, the Mountain Is You. These are all self-help books or kind of just like learning books, self-development books. We've also got The Art of Warfare by Sun Tzu, classic. <laughs> And then um, a few super random ones like uh, Pride and Prejudice. This is my um, ooh, this is my special edition of Pride and Prejudice. That's why there's still plastic on it because I'm trying to protect it. <laughs> these ones, um, I think I thrifted both of these and I haven't actually read them yet because they're not really my genre, but they're up there in case I feel like branching out into like contemporary romance. Um, I've got a plant book because I live in British Columbia and I really like plants. So I like learning um, about all of the plants that are around here. And then we've got some John Green. This is a wonderful book. It's very cute. <laughs> Moving on, this is kind of the miscellaneous uh, fantasy shelf. So either um, standalones or just, you know, part of the series. I'm trying to thrift all of these. So I've, I've just got these two so far. Um, we've got some poetry. That is the only poetry book I have, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Um, and kind of some super random stuff. Like this is an old favorite of mine. Um, it's a super cute read if you've read it. It's about a princess that basically meets a dragon um, and they become besties. Not quite, but <laughs> but that was one of my favorites. Um, I stole this from my parents' house. If they see this video, my mom will recognize this book and she'll be like, you stole a book from me. And I'll be like, yes, yes I did. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. All three of them are in there. Uh, yeah, and just some kind of random ones. This next shelf is obviously full of, of series. So first we've got all of the Sarah J Maas books, uh, including the Catwoman one. My crown is above Throne of Glass, of course, because that's where it belongs. And then of course, we have some more classics here. Um, my little jar, and then there's also a dagger here, you know, just for funsies. Um, I don't use it, don't worry. <laughs> And then down here is basically dedicated to Cassandra Clare. This was one of my favorite books when I was younger. I have now learned, I actually think every other book I've read from her is better than this series, but it was her debut series and I feel like I found it at a time when I needed it. So it's still, 
has a place close to my heart. This is the Last Hours series, which I'm still waiting for the final one to be released this year. This series, I do have the full one, but I let someone borrow the first book and I still haven't gotten it back. This is the Infernal Devices series, which I've heard is incredible. Um, I haven't started it yet, but it is sitting here patiently waiting for me to start it. And then we've got some kind of classics. Six of Crows and Cruel Prince are also waiting to be read. We have some interesting uh, kind of self-help books. This one is just about learning how to listen to your body. Um, this one is obviously about cognitive behavioral therapy. And this is The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, which is kind of like a workbook for creatives. I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't completely finish it, but I did a lot of it um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you're interested in kind of learning more about your own creativity and your own like creative processes, um, this is a really cool book and I really enjoyed it. Then down there we have my weapons, <laughs> my recurve bow and my training sword. Not really part of the bookshelf, but definitely part of the fantasy vibes. So they sit down there and then we move over here. So this is my kind of like folk tales, fairy tale section. So we've got Over Nine Waves, which is a bunch of Irish uh, folk tales, best loved folk tales from around the world, Necronomicon by H.P. Lovecraft, uh, three copies of Grimm's Fairy Tales because I have no good reason. <laughs> and then they're all sitting on top of a bunch of dictionaries, which seems like an odd thing, I know. Um, however, someone was giving them away for free on Facebook Marketplace and they have like gold filigree, I guess that's called, um, which I'm such a sucker for, like books that have kind of like the gold embossed words on them. I love it. So when someone was giving these away for free and they were in perfect condition, I uh, was at their house in no time. I was <laughs> immediately at their house asking if I could take them. So <laughs> that's why I have those. Then we go down here. We've got the Shadow and Bone series, which I'm still working away on. We've got the Uglies series by Scott Westerfield. That was one of my favorite dystopian series when I was younger. Um, it's really, it's a really, really cool concept. If you ever get the chance to read it, I would recommend. It's a it's an easy read, but it's super interesting um, from Blood and Ash. And then down here, we have basically a bunch more random stuff. This is a Philip uh, Pullman book, but as you as you can see, um, but it's actually the second one. And I was trying to find the first one and I couldn't, but I got this from like an outlet bookstore. So and I really enjoyed um, the Golden Compass series by him. So I figured I'd pick this up and at some point I'd get the first one. Got some class classic. I don't know how to pronounce um, pa Paolo Colo, but I've actually read a couple books from him in there and they're very, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> this is the author that wrote The Alchemist. Um, and then this is a book that I actually never finished and I still should at some point. Obviously the dust jacket's like falling off. So it's called 1Q84 and it's basically about, I think it follows two storylines if I remember correctly, uh, in Kyoto, Japan. Basically they start to realize that there's a parallel universe and there's a whole bunch of very like intertwined universal stuff going on. But it seems like there are a lot of really interesting themes in this book. And honestly, now that I'm talking about it again, I feel like I should pick it up and give it a read. And also just like take the dust jacket off because it's not doing anything anymore anyways. And then these are, this is some, um, this is the stuff for my bow. <laughs> and these are some very old books. Um, this was one of my favorite series when I was a kid. It was one of the first fantasy series um, I ever read, like full series. It is about um, a girl and her brother who kind of get very involved in like, with like the mer people, but it's really, really interesting. And I was obsessed with these books. Like this was the first series that I read that I had that feeling afterwards where I was like, I just wish I could live in the world of this book. This is the first series that I ever read that gave me that feeling. So holds a very special place in my heart. Um, and then we've got a few that I still have yet to read, of course. Um, <laughs> but kind of, again, just some like random fiction ones down there. And finally, we get over to the books that have no room right now because I'm running out of room on my shelves, as you can see. Um, I'm considering like taking the cupboards off of this and using the shelves inside for more books, but we'll see if that happens. Here's my plant. 
He's kind of just shoved in there because he doesn't really have a home yet, so he's hanging out there. Um, Piratology book, just like a really fun kind of interactive picture book that like tells you about pirates um, and I've really been enjoying it, especially since I'm currently writing a pirate novel. And then down here, basically all of these books are new books or books that I moved out here because I have to either finish reading them or start reading them. So I already finished like the Red Queen series, but I want to read the collection of novellas. I started reading these Violent Delights and I never actually finished it because I just like wasn't in the story, so I might pick that one up again. This one is actually from someone that I took archery classes with. Basically, I was taking archery classes and I met another woman there, um, and I we were just like chatting, and she said that she was there to do research for a book, which I was immediately intrigued by, because I was like, oh my god, I love writing, tell me about your book. So she's writing a fantasy book, um, and then this one was like a steampunk kind of book. Um, and she told me about it, so obviously I went and bought it because I was like, that's so cool, I'll go buy your book. Um, so I have that one. I haven't read it yet, but it's on my list. And then we have Love Is, which is by um, Catherine Sweet. She, I actually met her on TikTok and I ended up designing the cover for her. I have started reading it already, but I haven't finished it. So that's another one that I need to finish. This is a debut Canadian author. So she debuted last year. This one is called Life After Life. And my uncle actually uh, got me this one for Christmas. So I'm intrigued to read this one. It sounds very, very interesting. Um, let's see if we can see these a little better. Uh, this one is Piranesi, Dance of Thieves. A lot of these are like debut authors. Like I think all three of these um, were authors that I've seen on TikTok. So I started reading this one. Um, I already have, I just need to finish it. Story of my life. Um, and then we've got some classics, Sabriel, We Hunt the Flame. I really wanna read this one too. Uh, Wicked Souls by Katie Wismer. I already started this one as well. Red Queen, of course, I finished already. I've read Crescent City. I should put this back on the Sarah J Maas shelf, actually. Raybearer, uh, I picked this one up because it was in my Amazon cart and I was like, well, I'll buy it. <laughs> I'm currently reading um, Gideon the Ninth for a book club that I'm part of. It's pretty entertaining so far, actually. I was kind of worried that it was gonna be a little bit too heavy for what I was in the mood for right now because um, the author is very descriptive. There were just a lot of like paragraphs that take up nearly half the page um, of just like describing things. I think it's definitely a higher reading level than I'm used to because obviously I usually read like YA fantasy um, and I believe that this is adult. It took a second to get into, but it, it is actually quite entertaining so far. And then this is my book on character arcs. Uh, this is a craft book again that I am currently reading because I need help with my characters and that's Toothless. So yeah, that is my current bookshelf. Um, a lot of these are some of my favorite books. I literally shipped all of them across the country uh, in order to get them out here. I'm kind of sad because there are still a bunch that I'm missing. For example, I think it was the Gallagher Girls series. It was about a bunch of girls that went to spy school and they had to like basically navigate, you know, being spies and then also being normal people because they couldn't tell people they were spies. And I adored that series with my whole heart. <laughs> um, but I didn't get to bring that one with me. I'm also missing the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I don't, that's the name of the first book. I don't know if the series has a name. Um, and I'm missing that one and I'm so sad that I am because I realized that after I finished reading the series I think two more books came out in the series so now I need to reread all of them so that I can read those new books. That was a really interesting series as well. It followed a bunch of kids that had kind of odd abilities and they lived on this island that just looped throughout the exact same day in history in order to keep these kids safe from the real world and it is it was I loved that series as well and it's funny that those are some of the ones I didn't bring because those are some of the ones that aren't fantasy so I do read things other than fantasy it's just mostly fantasy but yeah so that is everything on my bookshelf currently I'm sure it will grow and grow and grow because that's just 
what happens when you love reading and writing. Um, although I do, I definitely need a little bit more space, so. And before I forget, I ended up hitting 10 patrons on Patreon. So thank you to all of these wonderful people who have joined me over on Patreon. There are 11 of you now, which is wild. I will be filming the video talking about all of my story ideas, how I've developed them, um, talking about some older ones that I've had, uh, and kind of just a whole video about story ideas. And it will be going up on my Patreon uh, at some point next week. So if you're interested in seeing that exclusive video, feel free to head over to my Patreon. Uh, it is a pay what you can tier system. So I changed it so that if you only want to pay like $4, you only have to pay $4 and you still get access to everything. That's all. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to smile and I will see you in the next video. Bye.